This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 15, on the 27th of June 2013, an interview with Soundwave. So it's uh, great to be here on the DMT One to One Show, and today I'm here with Brandon O'Driscoll, who's the CEO of the company Soundwave. So hi, Brandon, and great to have you on the show. How's it going? Thanks for having us, Andrea. We're delighted, uh, delighted to be here. So, uh, Brandon, it's been a big week uh, for uh, Soundwave, uh, and uh, the, the app has launched officially after a few months of uh, beta, and it's making a big splash. So, uh, first of all, uh, can you uh, tell us all about, uh, I'm sure you've said it a hundred times already this week, but uh, what the company does and what the app does? Sure, big time. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a crazy week. Uh, so, we have, a, we have a smartphone app for, for Android and for iPhone. Uh, it tracks what songs people listen to on their phones and, and where they are when they're listening to those songs. So, you can uh, plug in... It's, a, it's actually uh, somewhat similar to, to Twitter for music, so you can you can plug in and follow particular people, see what they're sit, what they're playing yeah. in real time, and then you can. Uh, the other cool thing is you can go to any location in the world and draw a circle over that location and see instantly the songs that are playing, the, the top played songs there. Yeah, and uh, so to talk me through the process of, of what happened because that's a quite an interesting interesting story. You know, you went from a, an incubator or a program to sort of a, a company that's grown, and uh, you know, we've done a full blown launch uh, this yeah. week, and you've, you've got a big feature on the on the App Store as well, which is which is great. And so uh, talk me through that process because I'm sure the listeners are going to be interested in that sort of entrepreneurial side of how things uh, happen. Yeah, for sure. I and mean, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind uh, eighteen months. We went through. Uh, NDRC Launchpad uh, Accelerator program here in, in Dublin uh, from February to May of last year. A uh, really intensive three months, uh, a lot of kind of product market fit, really understanding, not just trying to build as fast as possible, but really trying to understand as fast as possible where where the market fit is with the product that we were building. Um, so we went through that for three months. Uh, we graduated out of that in first place then in May of last year. And that really gives a lot of exposure and opened us up to a whole lot of opportunities. And from there then, I suppose we really started picking up an awful lot of momentum. We, we expanded the team uh, up to eight people. Uh, we got our own offices in, 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 uh, in January and we, we really just hit the, hit the code base pretty hard. And we surfaced there again uh, last week uh, with the launch, as you said, on, on iPhone and Android. Yeah. That's right. And uh, uh, it's, so it's a, an interesting company because uh, um, also one of the things that you managed to do is that uh, um, Soundwave is able to tap into uh, what people are listening to on the iTunes Music app, which is uh, quite an achievement because you're the first company to actually be able to figure out a way around sort of Apple's uh, uh, systems, but actually with Apple's uh, sort of uh, uh, approval uh, to do this. And so you're able to track what people are listening to after they install the app uh, without them having to do anything of, uh, you know, uh, of the kind. Uh, they don't have to think about it, essentially. So yeah. uh, so that was a big a big thing for you guys. And also, you also took some chances when it came to contacting high-profile people to help you in that quest. So, yeah. uh, and that's another thing that I think is that it's an interesting lesson for people that are looking to be entrepreneurs or are having their own company in terms of trying to shoot for the sky. And uh, yeah. so would you mind uh, telling us like uh, how you ended up, uh, for example, getting in touch with EQ and, and how that story came about? Yeah, I mean, so for, for, for kind of going go back to the, the iPhone uh, part first, we, yeah, uh, sure. you know, we were really uh, interested, I suppose, in what people were listening to on their smartphones. We were walking down the street, we saw everybody with headphones on, and they were all plugged into, into smartphones. But we knew, as you were saying, you know, that there was kind of no way of figuring out what, what people were actually listening to, especially on, on iPhone. And uh, so we put a lot of time into that and, and really did a lot of late night braids. So we, we came up with this solution that we thought was, uh, was effective and worked. And, Hopefully, uh, it was going to be approved by the App Store. So, yeah, and uh, we actually just, uh, in terms of then kind of reaching out to people, it, it really was a case of just uh, finding finding email addresses online and adding people on LinkedIn and just letting them know what we were up to. And I think because of uh, the product itself, did a lot of the selling on our behalf. So showing people early versions of the product, yeah, uh, saw the potential it had, and then they really just wanted to open up doors for us and, and help us out. So we reached. IDQ and passes passes on to his team, and we reached out to, to Steve Wozniak as well, and got some some great kind of insights from him on, on feature suggestions and stuff too. So it was great to uh, great to really, I suppose, let the product do the talk as opposed to us having to, to hire stuff. Yeah, absolutely, and and you know, it's it's one of those products that. Uh, you need a, a big support base uh, for, for it to really uh, come into its own. And it's yeah. great to have at least a few spokespeople that, that can start, kick off that process. And uh, uh, of course, I was at your event in London uh, on Monday where you had an uh, introduction at the App Store, uh, at the, uh, sorry, at, at the Apple Store um, with uh, Stephen Fry uh, and yourself uh, sort of uh, presenting the application. And Stephen Fry has been a, an early advocate of, uh, of Soundwave as well. And so it, it's great to see that kind of support for, for an early stage company because uh, that 
that's that's pretty rare really, really these days. Yeah, it's great. I mean, Stephen, uh, Stephen is has always been a fan of like emerging technology, and and we really wanted to just reach out to him and show him what we're doing, and he picked up on it almost immediately. Really, really enjoyed the product, really understood it from the from the get go, and since then he's just been a supporter and a fan. So we were kind of chatting with Apple about this and, and about our launch, and they suggested, you know, hey, why don't we try and get Stephen to come along to an event? And one thing led to another, and we had this. this fantastic event on Monday and you said you were there uh, but it was really great just kind of uh, really informal chat with Stephen kind of re- 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 kind of regaling why, why he thought sound was interesting and the benefits of sound wave and we just kind of did the wider story of, of how we how we came to be as well so it was really really ex- uh, excited uh, yeah. we were really excited to, to be there and to be chatting with him about sound wave. And so I know it's early days but uh the app has been live for maybe like five or six days now, uh, and so how how are things shaping up? And uh, um, are, are you are you happy with uh, with how it's behaving? And are your servers yeah. coping well and everything? <laughs> yeah, it's been amazing. It's been uh, it's been uh, you know a really energy intensive few days, a uh, few late nights as well. But uh, it's been amazing. I mean, within forty eight hours, we had hit uh, one hundred and eighty two different countries. Uh, I had in 182 different countries, so just to see that spread in real time was just incredible. You know, we were logged, I think, somewhere I think last count was about five or six hundred thousand plays in the last five or six days. You know, it's incredible just to see the explosive growth that we we received. You know, and I think that a lot of that attributes to our early kind of core uh, user base of, of beta testers that were helping us out and giving us iterative feedback. You know, really yeah. valuable and, and helps uh, support us. It's been it's been amazing to watch. Yeah, and and the geolocation side is of course is is pretty interesting. Uh, you know, the uh, for people that are listening, you know, you can go and uh, uh, and look at the map of where you are on Soundwave, and then you can draw a circle around the area where you are where you're at, and uh, you will be able to browse through what people are listening to in specific places, uh, which is uh, pretty cool and pretty interesting. If you are, uh, for example, in Camden, like I am right now, or if you are uh, in in Dublin or wherever, essentially, yeah. you find yourself to be, and so. Uh, how, how do you how do you think this this uh, feature could shape up in the future? Of course, right now it's a pretty simple feature that uh, you can just deploy for fun and have a have a look around and browse through what's happening. But do you think there could be more uh, uh, sort of advanced applications to that in the future? Definitely, you no. Know, I think as you, you hit the nail on the head. We we focused on you know just a really simple, intriguing kind of uh, base level feature there, and it's one of those ones when you have you have the app in your hand and you're looking at the map, you just you kind of, it's, it's really uh, engaging uh, in terms of just literally drawing a circle with your finger over anywhere in the world. But I think this has a, has a lot of potential, much more than more, more than where we're at right now. You know, we can get more in depth and uh, filtering by, by particular time sets and particular genres as well, you know? Yeah. So if I wanted to, if I was into hip hop, I wanted to know the top eight hip hop song in New York in the last hour, I can find that type of information, you know? So it really allows you to plug in any location, whether it's a country, city, street, or building, and, and see what's being playing, played and see what's playing the most. So yeah. it's quite exciting that you've got this visibility of kind of going anywhere in the world and, and seeing this. That's great. That's awesome. And, and finally, uh, I want to ask you about um, uh, how people are going to interact within the app. So, of course, that's that's a big part of it because once you install the app, the app starts listening to what you're listening to, and that's great. It becomes part of the feed, uh, but also like a big part of 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 making the app work is to get people to actually go into the app and check out what people are doing on the feeds, interacting with that side of things. So, how do you think yeah. that will 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 work out? And 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 uh, do you feel like a lot of interaction is going to happen within the app or also outside? I, I really think that's that's where the whole kind of central aspect of what we're doing uh, started. You know, we built this because we wanted to see what each other were listening to, and we were yeah. able to do that. You know, so I mean, I think that is is, is a, the strongest part of the app is I can I can find my friends easily. I can follow them, and I know, you know certain friends are into certain types of music much more than I am, and I can see you know what what do they listen to, and I, I can very quickly leverage the work that they've done in finding the new music, and I can be listening to it as well. You know, whether I, I stream it on SoundCloud or on YouTube within our app, or I purchase it through our app, or, or you know you could you, we're working on kind of deep integration with different players now as well, so you could export or play play through your, your Spotify or your audio account from within our app as well. So that's great. That, I mean, that's always the way, in my understanding, anyway, that's always been the way that uh, most people find music is by you know, uh, conversations down the pub or, or talking to their friends or, or asking other people, hey, what's, what's, what new music have you found or what bands are you listening to now or someone puts on a song and you go, hey, who, who's that, you know? So, I mean, it's always the social life of, of, of discovery music and I think what we've done I suppose which might be different is, is uh, it's the seamless integration that you don't need to manually tap 
tag anything. You don't have to type what you're listening to. You don't have to play it through uh, kind of a, a crappy player that we might have built. You just you just go about doing what you always have done. Enjoy your music. That's great. And uh, again, the app is available on iOS and Android. And of course, you don't need my push for the actual dispersion of the app, but hopefully it's going to raise awareness a little bit within the uh, music industry of uh, what you guys are doing. And uh, thanks so much for being on the show. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Andrew. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrans.com.